Okay. Hi, everyone. I hope everybody's having a great day. Today, we're here with Adriana Saman. Uh, for our listeners, our, our, uh, I, a little bit about Adriana. Adriana, I've known you since high school, I think, since, since yes. you were very young. Uh, today, Adriana, you know, she's a partner at a, a very reputable VC firm in, in the United States. It's Clock Tower Ventures, right? Yes, I'm a principal, but yes. For principal, sorry, 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 sorry. For, for, forgive me. I, I don't know the terms, but you know, Adriana, a, one of the reasons I invited her is because she invested in in my brother's company, DV Bank, and she also invested in D, a good friend of mine, Deepak's a company, and both of them speak very highly of Adriana, and, <laughs> and you know, they 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 love her. And 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 she she she's just amazing at her job and 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 she's she she's doing amazing stuff and and I think you know having her today here is is just great for anybody that that wants to understand what's going on in 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 venture capital in, in startups in general so so yeah eh, I'd love to Adriana start by if you could share with us your story. How you ended up in the U.S. and and yeah, like if you could just start, give us a like a mini bio of your life. Perfect. Yeah, great. Thank you for the kind words. I'm really excited to be here and very fond of founders you mentioned and obviously of knowing you for so long. So thank you for having me. Um, just to kick it off with my background, I I am originally from Ecuador, born and raised there. I came to the U.S. for college. I pursued my undergrad education at UPenn, the University of Pennsylvania. I was a political science major, which really has nothing to do with what I'm doing today, but still felt like something I was passionate about. I started my career at J.P. Morgan in, in their Latin America M&A group. I was there for a couple of years before I realized that FinTech was a passion that I wanted to pursue, primarily because of the potential financial inclusion impact it could have in a place like Latin America. And so I decided to repurpose my my time at JP Morgan to learn the most I could for under consumer side from under fintech business. So I spent a year doing strategy for the Chase app, which you could argue is one of the biggest fintech apps in the US, and covering everything related to consumer focused payments. So after that, I realized that I was very excited about fintech and the impact it could have, but less excited about spending a lot of time with the product. And I want to go out and empower entrepreneurs, find ways to help them and to generate a much wider impact in the ecosystem. And so I decided to join Clock Tower Ventures four years ago. Um, I was the first associate they hired ever, and we've come up a long ways of firm. Um, since I joined back in November 2018. At Glock Tower, I, I, this is fine. I focus on fintech investments. Okay. We are a fintech only venture fund. Oh, wow. We invest early stage. So C through Series B. Uh, we cover the US, Europe, and Latin America. I, I, I took a very important leadership role in launching our Latin America strategy, but I also spent time in the US, which I think gives perspective and helps, you know, cross pollinate learnings across regions and and puts us in a very great position to to help founders. That's awesome. Adriana, you, you mentioned that you went to school in UPenn and you studied political science. Why was that? Were were you were you interested in politics before or, or is, is it so, is still something that you're interested in or so I've always been interested in how systems work and how systems can help people have a better life. And so inevitably, you know, like public policy, economic policy okay. plays like the most important role. And so a lot of my career was focused around economic models around the world. Like it was very international um, and it shed light on a lot of issues that I became very passionate about. The main one of them was um, financial, lack of financial access in the, in the emerging markets. And so it's not totally um, disconnected from where I am today, but I, it, it, brought light to a topic from a very different perspective. That's awesome. That's awesome. Adriana, and you you did a you did investment banking in JP Morgan. Uh, was it investment banking? Like was it or or was it yeah it was investment banking. I'm looking at your profile right now. 
did you like in that time was it like very like you had to do all nighters all the time like was it did, did it have that environment okay it was it was very rough i am um, it was very rough it's like a thing i could never imagine doing again but oh. i'm also so glad i did it okay um beyond the basic understanding of corporate finance and also just a strong you know vision of how business works in latin america it really did bring me close to an amazing group of people all of the junior talent in new york and across the region have become some of my closest friends and a lot of them are now founders that we have invested in or investors that we partner closely with um so yeah it's uh, lots of bittersweet memories in jp morgan but it's an experience that i would never change awesome awesome adriana a lot of our listeners right now uh, are either in venture capital or startups or 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 they're they're looking at the current economic uh, environment and 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 you know things look a little uncertain. I'd love to for you to talk about what's going on in 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 venture capital and like for anybody that's listening, like for them to understand. Because like a lot of people say, like, I want to start a company today, and I think it's different from a, a lot of people that let's start a company in 2020 where everything. Exactly. Was, yeah. So like, I'd love for you to share with us. Yes, of course. So. A big investor here in the U.S. was quoted in an interview not too long ago saying that 2021 was the party, 2022 is the hungover. And I think that's a very good analogy of what we're living through right now. Um, there were a bunch of tailwinds that made 2020 and 2021, primarily 2021, outlier years in capital access. Um, you know, COVID was a big catalyst for digitization and forced people to stop doing pen and paper processes and, and like create a online accounts for the first time. That was a huge tailwind for not, not just financial services, not just fintech, but also any kind of subscription service or things that otherwise you wouldn't have considered. Commerce went through a roof because people were spending more time at home and shopping. Um, rates were still very low. So there was a lot of stimulus in the economy for people to continue um, spending their money. There was in parallel this craze around um, tech stocks and so everything just felt like it was you know the great time to to continue investing in tech and um, that led to you know and a radical increase in inventory dollars invested it also became one of the all-time highest times for funds to raise money on their own um, and so as soon as the fed decided to start pulling the you know to start re slowing down um the heat that we were going through in the economy and increasing rates that inevitably create an impact in, you know, the performance of tech stocks in the public market. And that was the main titles that permeated into a sense of concerns around what exit multiples could look like for private early stage venture capital funded companies. Um, and, and also there's just like, you know, like um, a sense of sobriety around, okay, like why did I pay the prices that I paid last year? Are, are these justifiable? Um, so it's been a, a bit of a retrench on the venture fund side where funds are rethinking their strategy in terms of what's the right price to enter in, what are the right, like what companies am I really going to be willing to invest in and what are the business models that I think will continue to attract capital and will continue to grow despite um, these, these economic changes. Well, yeah, I, I totally get it. And, you know, I just remember in 2020 or 2021, you went on LinkedIn and it's X company raised, X one raised every day. One new whole story. Like you felt like it didn't end. And also, I think I talked to you about this before crypto, Dodge coin going up and then another weird dog coin going up and everything just seemed to never really end. And now I feel like I cannot even open my, my, <laughs> my portfolio. I, I'm I'm afraid to log in and look at how bad it's look. I'm afraid. So like it it's definitely it's definitely a whole different scenario. Adriana, what do you what qualities do you look for any founder that is listening for a startup to consider for, for you guys to consider an investment? Like what do you like? Because you must hear pitches every day. Everybody might want to pitch you a company. <laughs> so what what is it that you look for? I, I know you mentioned fintech, but like, if yeah, you of course. With us, yeah, there's a couple of things. I think, first of all, it really not 
not entirely, but sort of depends on the stage. Okay. Um, we invest seed, pre-seed all the way through Series B, right? So the 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 way we attribute to the, the founder or anything else, it's always bigger than than the narrative or company, but it diminishes over time, right? C is primarily focused on the founder. A's and B's are the founder, but also signs of product market fit, traction of the business, et cetera. So at the seed stage in, in a space like FinTech, which is heavily regulated, and there isn't necessarily breakthrough technologies created, rather the use of technology to enhance distribution of the service or to make more efficient um, renditions of services. Um, we tend to focus on generally, you know, founders that first of all have some degree of authenticity with the problem they're trying to solve, right? If you want to build something in short tech, we want to know that it's because you have spent time in, in insurance, you understand how carriers and brokers interact and work, you understand the writing, you understand the price of risk. Um, and you also sympathize with the fact that it's a company that will be trading at multiples that are much lower in a software company. We don't want to hear that you're trying to build this because it sounds cool and then when it's public and it's like great space, huge stem. Um, it takes much more than that. So authenticity and relevance of the experience with the business model you're building, I think is very, very important. I um, think there's also a degree of, you know, how co your commercial skills um, how how scrappy are you? Have you really gone out there and like really sought and to figure out your thesis as much as you could, even without money? Like, um, are you a strong attractor of talent? Companies in the end are just, you know, um, just a group of people making decisions, and you want to make sure that the founder is able to convince as many of these people and like the best of I mean, these people. Yeah. Um, to leave their comfortable, reliable, paying job and come take risks for you. And so that's not an easy ask. And if you're not able to do that, you are likely not going to be able to build a great company. And so we put a lot of emphasis on that. Um, and generally there's a degree of, are you a good person? Like, do we feel like we could work with you? Do, you, do we think you're willing to learn, you're coachable and you're open-minded to things aren't necessarily going the way you want them to go. Um, do we feel like you want us to be a partner for the right reasons? And um, it also makes a difference. That's amazing, Adriana. Adriana, what, what are some of the, I mean, you, you get a lot of pitches, like what are some of the common mistakes that you see when somebody, you know, like is talking to you and you're in the middle of the call, like I can't believe this guy said this or <laughs> should have known this or like, what is what are some of the like things that you're like, why do people, fix this, you know, before coming to, me, to Confluence? Yeah, so a couple of things. To me, a, a common mistake is when founders are not super on top of their numbers. To me, knowing exactly where you are in terms of traction, expected re revenue at the end of the year, your margin structure, the difference between the different kinds of margins that you're going to be looking at your business. Um, if you don't know those numbers cold, to me, that's an orange flag at least. To read, I expect founders to be, you know, so embedded in their information, so data driven in their decision making that those numbers should be so obvious to them. I think that's one. Another one is sometimes founders don't even remember their own syndicate of investors, and it makes sense when it's later on and you have like a very big cap table. But on the earliest stages, I would want to see that a partner, that a founder has really put thought through who they're letting into their cap table, who are their partners there for the next ten years, and. And not just taking money for the sake of taking money. So I agree when money is more scarce and less of a commodity, you're going to be for sure more open-minded to taking capital from sources that are, you know, not the person that you always dreamed of having your cup table. But at the same time, there's a degree of balance of, hey, am I being smart and strategic about this or am I just being trying to close this as fast as possible? And those decisions can be very painful later on. And so we want to make sure that we get a sense of how thoughtful you are around setting up your own syndicate. I think there's something else around like following up, like very basic things like, okay, bye, please send me your deck information. They don't send First it. of all, sending information on time, like the, the same day or right after the call has such a lasting impact as opposed to sending it two days later. But then also what you send, the quality of materials that you send makes a difference. I think I've encountered, especially in 2021, many founders who decided not to write a deck or decided to write 
you know, like a quick little to pay your thing because rounds were moving so fast um, that they didn't want to take too long producing materials. Um, that has changed. And so making sure you have a well-written deck that shows very crisply what you're trying to, to build uh, that gets an investor excited about the big vision, uh, I think it's fundamental. And alongside it, there should be a business model, like a, an Excel model, as I'm saying, a financial model. So even if you're not um, generating revenue yet, it's a very important exercise for investors to understand how you're thinking about the business, like the revenue profile of your business, the efficiency of your business. If you haven't thought of that, um, it's going to be harder to sell the viability of what you're building. And so making sure you're producing quality materials and not just um, qualitative, but also robust in the quantitative perspective. Well, I can imagine, and especially you that you did invest in banking, you see a, a comma, a, a wrong comma or yeah, something. Exactly. And it's like, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I do have an eagle eye. I, I don't hold counters accountable for that degree of attention to the deal, but I expect I do expect good quality materials, and I think it's a fair expectation. Yeah, no, totally. You're going to give somebody millions of dollars and you can't do a PowerPoint? Like, of exactly. course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, can you give us, Adriana, like an example of some companies that you've invested in and, you know, why did you invest and how, how are they doing? Like, yeah. I, yeah, I think um, just a good example of a company we invested in, especially in Latin America, I'll go with Kushki because it was the first investment we made. Um, we don't have favorites. We have more than 34 investments in the region and we're expecting to add more. We love all of them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Kushki is a great example where um, it, it really brings to, it really selects so much of the thesis in Latin America. We, we met the team late in 2019. We made the investment early 2020 before COVID was, um, you know, announced national global pandemic. Um, Kushki is a company that's a payment processor building that new payment processing rails across the region. Um, they are originally from Ecuador, which also makes me really proud. They are present now in most countries in Latin America, processing enterprise payments. Why was this an exciting company? And it, it, it shows you how, how broken the payment ecosystem is in Latin America. Um, very difficult to, you know, like very high decline rates, very lots of charges, lots of fraud. Um, and that itself is such a, it's an inefficiency that prevents other financial services to flourish. And so our big thesis in this fund is that we would love to have as many payments companies as possible at every po point of the payment value chain. Um, because we think that's truly setting the stage for more financial innovation to come and for more efficiency to be removed, inefficiencies to be removed from the system. Um, so yeah, um, Kushi has already raised a lot of money since we invested. They are out of some of the largest companies in Latin America's clients and, and we're continuing to support it and look forward to um no yeah no Kushki is a great company hey, I think they're valued over a billion dollars hey, Sebastian I know Sebastian I we actually invited Sebastian to the podcast so nice fun everybody should listen to him he 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 he's amazing and and no that's 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 incredible a great team a hey, Adi let me ask you this what a what advice you know what what are some of the benefits of starting a company today that you see that that's maybe a people like before i mean I, like you know you know you've heard now there's a recession so it's a good time yeah. so if you could talk so, a little bit about that there's a lot of benefits of starting a company today so first of all it's important to keep in mind that funds as I mentioned at the beginning of the conversation, funds raised historically high amounts of money in the past two years. And so there's still a lot of capital to be deployed. So there's money in the system. And that's very important. Like we, Our job is to invest money and we have money to invest. It. So there will be capital. The difference is that the capital will be placed in a slightly more conservative way, um, especially in emerging markets. And so I think what's good about it is that you will get feedback on your idea in a very real way, much faster, based on how much capital you're, raised, you're allowed to raise, right? Like last year, you could have raised money for anything. This year, you're going to be able to raise money for ideas that truly resonate and from investors who really care about them and will likely be 
more likely to be um, involved or, or very excited about what you're building, or they will also have a more authentic um, interest in, in the space. Um, another thing is that there's gonna be a lot of available talent given lots of tech layoffs. So there's a big opportunity to, to hire um, top tier people at prices that are probably more viable and attractive than they would have been last year. And as we mentioned, talent is fundamental for a business to thrive. So I think that's actually a true telling. Um, valuations might be lower, but it's also gonna force you to be more disciplined and to be smarter about how you spend your money. I think it'll profitability faster than before and, and force you to build a viable businesses and you know, like be more rigid about your framework of thought. Totally, totally, totally. Uh, by, by the way, for everybody that's listening, uh, this the only sponsor for this podcast is Gold Media Tech. If you need engineers or software developers and you're an American company, we have more than 55 engineers full-time ready to help you. JavaScript, Python, all of them from machine learning, data engineering. Uh, we even have designers as well. They All of them speak English. So if you need a developer, just go to goldmediatech.com. And we'll be able to help you. On top of that, we have a two-week trial where you can test our de developers. And if if you don't like the developer, we assume the cost. And it's so basically, it's almost like risk-free. And yeah, that's 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 our small a, <laughs> a so commercial cool. commercial so nice. commercial. A, <laughs> oh, Adi, what what are your plans like? Do you plan to stay in the U.S.? Are you ever planning to come back to Latin America? Uh, what were some of your plans there? I I think for a foreseeable future, I will stay in the U.S., but that doesn't mean that I will be spending less time in Latin America. Uh, we're, we're, you know, like we're very excited about the Latin America opportunity and want to dole down eventually in, in our capital exposure there. And so for us, for me, being in the U.S. only means that I get to be a, a resource for Latin American founders in the U.S. and provide differentiated value by being here rather than being there. Um, and, you know, Mexico is only a three-hour flight from L.A., so I'm there oh. very, very often. And, and yeah, I think there's there's something unique about being here and spending time there that I wouldn't want to, to change. Totally. What what are your what are your thoughts on on crypto in general on on the whole crypto thing that's going on? Like, do you are you guys like fans of it? Like, what like what what? what? So my answer will be very short in on this one because we have done we haven't done a single investment in crypto. Um, for the longest time, we were perceived as like like maybe like not the smartest or like why are you not learning about it? Why are you not spending time? Um, it was never anything else other than being resource constrained internally and having so much to dig into traditional financial services and Latin America and Europe that and the US that crypto never became a priority. Right now it's the same. We we haven't we're not spending time in crypto at the moment. I, I personally have I, I, I do believe in crypto as, as a tool that can bring lots of great things to Latin America as a region, but at the same time um, the regulatory Great area that it's dancing deters oh. us from 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 spending more time uh, as a potential investment candidate, like space to invest in. Totally, 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 totally. I think uh, no, I agree. I agree. Like I think it's just it's just also very very hard to to see. You know what what happened with all the FTX thing and all the other companies. That that went on, Adri. A, let me ask you this: How how has you know you were raised in Ecuador and now you're like in 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 the U.S. Like, would you advise a lot of a, what advice would you give to young girls that are in high school that want to go you know to the U.S. and they want to copy you and like I mean as a, as a mentor you know that like you <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Yes, what advice right. would you give them? like because like you. I mean, getting into pain, it's very hard. And getting into banking, it's very hard. And and what advice would you give somebody that wants to end up yeah, in your shoes? There, there's multiple pieces of advice. I think the very practical thing 
is start very early to prepare and to think out what you want to do. If you reach junior, senior year, and you haven't really thought about it, or you're starting to dive into it, it'll be much harder for you to build a, a good story, right? I think schools in the US value you as a well-rounded person. They don't care only about your grades or SAT scores. And so start thinking from early on in high school, what is it that you think is gonna make you a special applicant? Uh, but also why do you want to go to that school? Think about how, like, what's the, the what really gets you excited, what drives you. And there's so many universities in the US that, that, you, that you could be a great candidate of for. Don't only narrow your choices to what's been told to you on like the rankings of universities. Um, think more creatively and think more openly around what's the kind of campus that you would thrive on, what's the kind of career that you want, what do you want to get out of your experience in the US and guarantee that's gonna give you such a better experience and just fighting to get into like the one Ivy League just because it happens to be an Ivy League. For me, Penn, um, I really went to Penn because when I visited campus, I I fell in love with their interdisciplinary philosophy. At that point, I wasn't sure if I wanted to study political science or economics or anything else. And and Penn pushes you to to take classes in all four schools and and to have, you know, like only your major is only half of the classes that you take. And you don't even really know who goes to which of the schools because everyone is going to all kinds of classes. And to me, that was very special and very magical and was something that I, I valued, but um, other people might care about other kinds of things. And so make sure that you figure out what it is that matters to you. And once you're in college, stay true to that, right? Talk to a lot of other people, network from day one, um, go to events on campus. Those always tend to be more helpful than people think. And Again, especially in giving your perspective of what you want to do with your career. And don't wait until the last minute because it will be much harder to oh, build yeah. a story and to build a network. That's 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 great advice. Yeah, no, I mean, I can't imagine all the hard work you went through. Like, I think, for example, a, a lot of Colombians study in Colombia because there are good schools there in Colombia. And yeah. I never really thought about, you know, I want to go to college in the U.S. and stuff like this. And when I when I see people that went to great great schools, I feel like they were preparing from ninth grade to twelfth grade, and like it's just not it's something that that you know it's true. I, I find it super impressive. I I I love it, and 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 yeah, Adri. I think the the only last question that I would like to ask you is like any advice for for entrepreneurs right now, like or people that want to get into business. A uh, what what. It doesn't matter what it is. Like, so, what would you recommend them today and, and to focus on? And I think that's pretty much it. I think it's such an uncertain time that it's easy to tell you, hold on to your money and wait for two more years or or to tell you, don't worry, you'll be fine. I think the real advice would be follow your intuition and, and stay true to yourself. And sometimes you need to be a little more selfish than you think and, and really focus on what matters to you and, and hopefully I will translate in what's most important thing for your company. Um, and it's likely going to be a decision that is not going to come from someone in your board or someone that doesn't have the same degree of empathy as you have with like, what are your key goals? And, and if you were chosen to be a leader, there's a good reason for that. And you should stay true to that. Awesome. Awesome. Adrian, I think I don't have any more questions. I want to really thank you for your time. I think a... Yeah, I, I, I'm. I, we we want to see you succeed and 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 see you keeping investing in other great companies and and I want to. I appreciate your time. I I, I yeah. Thank you so much, Ed. Of course, Andy. My pleasure. Super happy to be here. And you know, can count on me for anything you need. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm gonna be in LA, so I'll. I'll I'm in Perfect. Park, <laughs> so I'm gonna visit you. <laughs> yes, that's so exciting. Bye, Andy. Bye. <laughs>